stress matrix so we can represent stresses in different systems so if we talk about three dimensional stress system we represent this stress into some three cross three square matrix and whatever is written inside these are your stresses so sometimes we write as sigma xx sigma xy sigma xz sigma yx sigma yy sigma yz sigma zx sigma zy sigma zz so you please don't get confused with this notation because this is actually the correct notation that generally we use and even it's used globally but sometimes it is seen that in um, this your gate examination sometimes they put up the question uh, in this format in order to confuse you so they have used the symbol sigma for your shear stresses as well so uh, but to be more specific the correct notation that has to be used for your shear stress is tau okay so whether this is used or this is used it doesn't matter at all you have to keep in mind that whenever it is written the stress systems is written in terms of matrix this corner the diagonal elements are your normal stresses and rest other elements are your shear stresses okay and we have already discussed about the notations and representations of stresses just like uh, the first uh, subscript represents your face and the second subscript re represents your direction all right so we have got sigma xx then tau xy then tau xz and similarly and so on okay now in three dimensional stress system this is uh, let's consider we have considered a uh, 3d cubicle block and uh, along this x-axis the stress which is being generated is represented as sigma xx you can represent this sigma xx as sigma 1 1 also as simply sigma x no problem now in y direction it could be represented as sigma yy and in z direction it could be represented as sigma zz so i have shown this uh, representation of the shear stresses separately actually it has to be shown here itself but in order to avoid confusion and for your better clarity i have shown this shear stresses in a separate diagram so you know very well that these normal stresses are shown perpendicular to the surfaces so we have got six surfaces the surfaces we have is uh, r r uh, a b c d second surface we have is g h e f then we have a b h a and then we have d c f e and then front surface we have a h e d and the back surface we have b g f c okay so on these six surfaces we have shown different shear stresses which are being exert uh, which are being generated out here now these notations we are quite familiar with so this red color arrow which is pointing towards right this represents your shear stress which is acting on y plane or y face and pointing towards x direction similarly we have got the counterpart of this that is tau x uh, y x so on the top surface if it is going from left to right then on the bottom surface it has to go from uh, right to left okay now the complementary part of this the complementary part of this one is your this could be represented on this vertical axis these two vertical axis all right so we have uh, the pairs we know that the shear stresses always exerts in pairs fine now similarly in different faces there could be different shear stresses so this red color arrows as you can see then we have green colored arrows then yellow colored arrows blue colored arrows or these possible combinations are possible and all these combinations are usually shown or represented in this matrix format okay now if we reduce our 3d stress system to a two dimensional stress system then simply we need to take only the sub matrix that is the first column uh, the first corner sub matrix that is sigma xx tau xy tau yx and sigma yy so we have got the sub matrix of that the z components gets deleted so we have got the z components in this column and then in this row so we need to delete this column and we need to delete this row whatever is remaining for two dimension that is x and y we have written like this now for diagrammatic representation for a 2d diagram we can show this normal stress and shear stress like this format so towards left it's sigma xx towards right sigma xx and then we have shear stresses on the top which is going from left to right and then from right to left so this is your shear stress which is tau yx this is also tau yx 
Now this green colored as you uh, shear stress that you can see out here this is called your complementary shear stress. So what is a complementary shear stress? Your complementary shear stress is nothing but a shear stress in a given condition exists without a balancing shear stress of equal intensity in a direction at right angle to it and this stress is called complementary shear stress. So you can say that this blue shear stress is a complementary shear stress of green shear stress or rather in the other way around you can also say that this green colored shear stress is the complementary shear stress of this blue colored shear stress. Okay, So if the shear stress is pointing towards clockwise if it is giving a sense of clockwise rotation then your complementary shear stress has to counter it and has to be in anti-clockwise direction. Now further if we reduce our two dimensional stress system to a one dimensional stress system then again we need to take a single element that is the sub matrix of this 2D matrix we need to omit our y axis so we need to delete this column we need to delete this column whatever is remaining out here we need to take this so we have shown only one element single element in a one dimensional stress system. So this is the basic um, graphical representation of your one dimensional stress system that you consider any body and you show the stress generated in this direction either in this direction or maybe if not in x then maybe in y or in, if not in y then maybe in z so out of these three uh, directions of the coordinate system only one direction has to be shown so that is the thing for a three dimensional two dimensional and a one dimensional stress system i hope you understood how to represent the stresses in, the, in a matrix format and then how to represent in various diagrams see you in the next lecture till then bye